There's a huge and fundamental difference between arrays and slices in Golang. And to really understand and grasp this difference, we first need to understand the fundamental data structures, dynamic and static arrays. In that video, we will look at a common pitfall for beginners that will slow down your algorithm in Golang. To give you a really brief explanation what the difference here actually is, a static array has a fixed size that must be declared at compile time. And this specific array is declared on the stack itself, which makes it really, really fast. On the other hand, a dynamic array can change its size at runtime and the memory is allocated on the heap. So the fundamental and key differences between these two types of arrays is basically the memory allocation concept, but also the size flexibility. Now, obviously, there are a lot of more fundamental differences between these two types of arrays, but this is a really rudimentary overview to give you just a brief explanation what the general difference between these two types of arrays is. Okay, so with that in mind, we can just go straight into the code and look at an example and the common pitfall that a lot of beginners do. Now, I think things should be really self-explanatory when we want to declare a static and dynamic array. Basically, we declare a slice or a dynamic array by just having this sort of syntax here, right? And whenever we want to declare a static array, we just declare the size of the array inside of the square brackets. So for instance, this is our slice here. Let's just call it S in this case. And the array itself is this here. And you can actually see the difference, right? In the array itself, we declare the size directly and in the slice, there is no specific size. So with that in mind, let's just quickly change the type here from string to int. And then we are just going to print for now the length of the slice and the capacity. And I'm going to explain here exactly what the capacity really is. So let's just say len and then s and then cap s. Now this cap function here just returns basically the possible capacity of this specific slice, or it could be also an array, right? So if we just pass in five here, then obviously the capacity is five. So let's quickly run this code. And we can actually see that the length and capacity is the same. Now, this is not always the case for slices. Now, obviously for this specific definition here, the length is zero because we don't have any elements and the capacity is also zero. So let's just print some things again. So let's just print this thing maybe three more times. And then before that, we are going to append elements, right? And we are just going to make use of the append function here. So we say for instance, one, two, and then maybe also three. Right. So now we should have possibly three elements in our slice. Now, generally to get into the big O notation, this append functionality of a static slice is amortized big O of one. Now, the reason it is amortized is basically that appending a new element always requires the dynamic array to somehow allocate new memory for this specific element. But it is so tiny, so small and pretty much always constant that it is amortized big O of one. So what we got is the expected output except the last output, which is three, four. So as you can see, the capacity kind of doubled in its size, right? Why is that actually the case? Now, this is only specifically for dynamic arrays and not for static arrays. Now, the reason for that is that it kind of has a smart algorithm, the dynamic array allocation for new elements in this case, because obviously we don't know the size of this dynamic array, right? So whenever we kind of try to append a new element and the size or the pre-allocated size for the dynamic array for the elements basically is exceeded, we always double the size or the capacity of the dynamic array, which basically means that whenever we kind of append this element here, the capacity gets increased or doubled in this case. Now, and the reason why this is big of one amortized, I already explained this, 
but this appending functionality is big O of n, which is the worst case whenever we want to append a new element to a dynamic array, as the reason is basically that we have to kind of shift or move the memory allocated for this dynamic array to somehow a new memory block. So whenever we append a new element, we have to resize the array. Right? So in the end, a dynamic array is nothing more than a static array with just some better capacity or dynamic capacity in mind. Right? So we have to kind of redeclare the array in the memory whenever the capacity is exceeded. Now and then obviously we have to go through the individual elements and allocate them in the memory as well. And that obviously takes big O of n in the worst case where n is the number of elements in the dynamic array. Now let's just look at a really simple coding problem to demonstrate this example. So the problem basically is to sum a list of elements in an array. So what we could do is obviously in the interview itself. Let's just simulate an interview here. And the interviewer basically says that we want to have an array, right? So the interview does not specify if it should be a dynamic array or a static array. So what we could do is just to ask, okay, whether to use a static or dynamic array. Because obviously we now know the reason what actually the purpose of a static array is. So for instance, what we can do here is just to declare a numbers array of a fixed size. So in the end, we kind of leverage the stack and the functionality of a static array and obviously also the optimizations of a static array to optimize this solution here, right? Because we kind of know the size of the numbers array and therefore we kind of initialize this numbers array here with a fixed size and then the elements. So and then I think everything should be clear so we can get the first element in the last element. But also we can obviously modify the elements inside of a static array, right? And then in the end, we just loop over the numbers, which is big O of n, so linear time, where n is five, basically. And then we just print the sum of all the elements. Now, obviously, we can just make use of a dynamic array here as well by just removing the size. Now, the problem with that is that, like I've discussed earlier, that we might allocate more memory than actual needed. So this is really important to know here before implementing the solution of any sort of array problem, right? Just ask beforehand if a static or dynamic array should be used in this case, because obviously, static array has advantages compared to a dynamic array. Now, and obviously, if we just run this program, everything works fine, and this is as expected. But now, if we like append elements to the numbers array, right, the memory will increase. And because this is unnecessary, and also for other developers, just to make things more readable, we can just declare the size here, because obviously the size will not change, and therefore we define specifically that this is a static array. All right, this was just an example of how you can leverage static arrays in a coding problem, and it will actually optimize your runtime solution, not specifically for this problem we've actually discussed earlier, but whenever you try to append an element, try to think of how you can maybe solve this with a static array instead of using a dynamic array, right? Because as we've discussed, whenever we try to append a new element to a dynamic array, the worst case scenario is big O of n. And with that in mind, you can now try to optimize your algorithm in Golang with a static array. Now, if slices or static arrays sound new to you, then I highly recommend watching this video here, which is basically a really basic crash course of using the programming language Golang. Now, hopefully you found this video interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.